Welcome back for today's lesson. We are on Unit 1, Rates of Change. Lesson 3, Rates of Change and the Equation. Now in our previous lesson, we looked at rates of change and the slope of a curve. We saw that the average rate of change can be measured by finding the slope of the secant of a curve. Now a secant intersects the curve at two points. The instantaneous rate of change can be found when you find the slope of the curve um, of the tangent to the curve at that point of interest. So today we're going to look at um, something different. If you're given the equation, now remember that any curve can be described by a, an equation. So we're going to look at using that equation or define the rate of change. When the equation of a function is known, the average rate of change over an interval, because remember, the average rate of change is over an interval of the independent variable x. Now let's take a look at our generic curve here. Which we now these two points we're going to say are representative a and b. Along our horizontal axis is our independent variable, which is x, and vertical is our y. Okay, let's just label that. And here we have A, and this is B, okay? So A comes first, and B is after A. So these are the two points on the curve. If we were to draw horizontal lines up to the curve, that this is where A and B would intersect this curve. So we were to draw a secant along those two points that goes through those two points. Um, this pink would represent, represent that secant. Now, if the equation was known, we can use this equation, okay? Uh, if we wanted to find this slope, let's say we didn't have this curve. I'm giving you this as a visual. If we didn't have this curve, we only had the equation that described this curve. Then we can take this equation and we can plug in the values of a and b, okay, into the equation. So these would be your y's and this would be the difference between a and b. You might also recognize this equation as something that is more familiar, and I'm going to write this out for you here. So I think it'll make things very clear. If I was to say, well, it's the function, which is our y, okay, at b, which we can say is y2, minus the function at a, which is y1, all over, you'll have to excuse my writing there, um, x2 minus x1. And we all know that is the equation for the slope. Just a regular old slope of this line, okay? Now, if h represents the interval between the points on the x-axis, then the two points can be expressed in terms of a and a plus h. The two endpoints of the secant can't are then a and f at a, okay, and a plus h and f at a plus h. So again, if we're looking at this, all I've done here is I said that a and b are separated by a distance of h. In saying that, I can then say that a then plus h is simply equal to b. And in the previous equation, we can take b, and everywhere there's a b, we can replace it with a plus h. So we can then say that delta y over delta x is equal to f at a plus h minus f at a all over. Now if we want, we can simplify, well, we do want, we, will, we can simplify the denominator. So if we, we were to remove the the brackets, we can see that the a's will cancel out, and all we're left with is h. And there's our equation. Okay, for the average rate of change, we can use this equation if we are given the equation or the relation that describes this curve. Now here we've been talking about um, average rate of change. However, we can also take a look at how we can use this, we actually can use this, in order to find the instantaneous rate of change. As long as h gets really, really small and almost approaches 
zero, we can use the same equation or to find the instantaneous rate of change as long as we have a small interval. Refresh. The instantaneous rate of change refers to the rate of change in an instant. As h becomes smaller, the slope of the secant becomes increasingly closer to the slope of the tangent. So the closer h is to zero, the more accurate the estimate becomes. So this is something that we have to, to remember, especially the, the last bullet right here. We can choose a smaller h, and that will give us a more accurate estimate of um, the instantaneous rate of change. Let's take a look at our first example. Ahmed is cleaning the outside of the patio windows at his aunt's apartment, which is located 90 meters above the ground. Modeled by S at t is equal to 90, 90 minus 4.9 t squared, Ahmed accidentally kicks a flower pot, sending it over the edge of the balcony. So S at t, in this case, represents the position of the flower pot. Let's take a look at A. Determine an algebraic expression in terms of A and H to represent the average rate of change of the height above the ground of the falling flower pot. Simplify your expression. So you can picture this flower pot. Okay, let me just draw you a little diagram. So pretend that that's the balcony. Um, let's say it's an apartment and it's three uh, stories up. Okay, and Ahmed decides to kick it from there, so there it goes right there. So the only thing that's affecting this gravity, okay, and this equation represents that curve. Now recall that the equation for the average rate of change, okay, is delta y over delta x is equal to f at a plus h minus f at a all over h. But now we have a function in that in which that we can use, which is, I'm just going to rewrite it, s of t is equal to 90 minus 4.9 t squared, okay? So now what I've done is I've taken my function, and everywhere there's a t in the first part, I've replaced with a plus h. Okay, and I use my big brackets. This is important because of this negative sign here, you will make mistakes um, when you actually multiply this in if you don't use your, your brackets. And in the second F at A, I've taken where there's a T squared, I've replaced it, or wherever there's a T, and I've replaced it with A. And that is all over H. What you're going to note here is that you have this A plus H squared. So that's a perfect square binomial, okay, or a squared binomial. Uh, let's review on how we would expand something like that. So a plus h squared, okay, is equal to a squared. So it's the first term squared. Um, you can even expand this if uh, at first if you'd like. Um, it is then a plus h, or a times h, plus another a times h, and then the last term squared is h squared. Notice that there are two of the middle terms, so it just simplifies to this. And you were probably taught this in grade 10. Um, if you would like to use the shortcut, then go, by all means, go right ahead. For now, if you need to do um, the full expansion, please do so. Now let's go back to, to our um, question that we've been working on. Uh, and now we're going to simplify even further. I'm going to attempt to remove a lot of the brackets. So let's go with 90. Okay, I'm going to remove that bracket, minus 4.9. a squared plus 2ah plus h squared. Okay, that's a square, and I'll fix that up for you. Minus 4.9. Okay, so I'm going to remove the brackets in the second term. Uh, by multiplying the negative sign in, so it's minus 90 plus 4.9 a squared all over h. Okay, so let's simplify this further. Okay, so 
watch your negative signs. It'll make a big difference when you work it out. Because what you're looking for is actually to cancel terms. And I'll show you what I mean. You can't seem to cancel out terms. Um, I would go back and take a look to see if you've actually made a mistake somewhere. Okay, and that of course is all over H. Okay, Let's see if we can cancel out some terms. Let's see, oh, and I made a mistake right there. Okay, perfect. So these will cancel. So they're the same and just opposite signs, and the 90s will cancel. Okay. So now we're going to rewrite it again. Let's see if I can add an extra page here um, with what we have left over, which is equal to minus 9.8 AH minus 4.9 H squared all over H. If I look at the numerator, I can actually uh, factor out another h in the numerator. Okay. Okay, and those will cancel. And I'm just left with minus 9.8a minus 4.9h. Okay, and that's my expression for the average rate of change. Let's see how we can use that in a numerical question. Okay so, I... okay, so part B, determine the average rate of change of the flower pot's height at one second and at three seconds. So the average rate of change, that's what we're looking at here. That's what we're looking to find is the average rate of change. Okay, so remember in our equation, we had A, okay, which is a variable. Oopsies. Algebraic. We had A and we had H, okay? So in this case, A is where we start, okay? So it's the value in the X. Now, if we read this carefully, I know it's deceiving because it says the average rate of change of the flower pot's height. It's looking for just the average rate of change um, at these seconds, okay? Between these uh, intervals of X, which is time. So we start off at A, which is one second, okay? Uh, and H is the difference between the two. So that would be two seconds. So H is two. Okay, let's fix that up. Okay, so let's take our equation that we had uh, come up with. Our specific equation. I would call it a specific equation to this uh, particular question. A is one minus 4.9 times two. Okay, and it would work that out to be 19.6, and we close that up here. Sometimes my pen doesn't always want to work. Um, meters per second, okay, because the distance is in meters and the time is in seconds, so it's meters per second. And to really complete this, we really should be putting a therefore statement, but I've seemed to have run out of room, so I'll just verbally say it to you. Therefore, the average rate of change of the flower pot's height um, between one and three seconds, I should say between, between there, is minus 19.6 meters per second. Okay, and that would be a complete answer. I This answer I would probably dock myself for communication, but I don't think you'll do that on a test, will you? Okay, so therefore statement. So now let's estimate the instantaneous rate of change of the flower pot at one second. Okay, remember what we had talked about before. We can use the equation for the average rate of change as long as our interval is very small. So we want to estimate A being one is where we start. Okay, H, hmm, well, what can we do here? We can um, choose a very, very small interval. Okay, so that interval can be 0 0.001. Um, another option would be 0. Uh, actually, that would be, yeah, I think I would choose that. 0. 0.01 would be another, but remember that the smaller you get, the smaller this interval is, the closer to zero it is, the more accurate it is. 
So I would tend to use this one. This one would not be wrong. It wouldn't be quite um, as accurate as a smaller one. Well, we can even go further, but let's be realistic. We're not going to um, sit there and, and put 30 zeros into one. So anyway, this is what I would tend to do, okay, if it was just numerical. So it's minus 9.8. Now I'm going to fill everything in my equation again. So A, I said it was 1, minus 4.9. Zero point zero zero one. My end result would be minus nine point eight meters per second. Once I work it out, and that would be the instantaneous rate of change at one second. Okay, and of course the therefore statement. Uh, let's see if I can do this without making a mess. The rate of change, the rate of change, I don't know if I, anyway, you get the idea, 9.8, but just remember you put a, put a statement, that'll at least complete it, okay? Okay, let's take a look at part D, okay, so we want to determine the equation of the tangent at t is equal to one and that, that should say seconds, okay. Okay, there we go. Um, determine the equation of the tangent. Now remember, a tangent and a secant are lines. They're straight lines. That means that we can come up with an equation that describes the straight line, okay? So in doing so, remember, let's recall way back, back to grade nine, y is equal to mx plus b. That is our general equation of any line. When coming up with this equation, we always want to find what m is, okay? Always want to find what m is, and then of course what b is. Okay, so those are the two things that we need to find. Okay, so we know what, okay, so in our, our case here, t is x. So we know that x, oh my, t, which is also equal to one second, okay, which means that we can find what y is. Well, y in this case is s at t. It's the independent variable, okay? It's the y. I'm just going to write that little note there, but I'm sure you know this. We know that it was 90 minus 4.9 t squared. So s at one second, that is equal to 90 minus 4.9, there's the 1, and that leaves us with 85.1, okay? And that is our y when t is equal to 1. So now we have m we have y, we have x. So the only thing we need now is b. Okay, so I'm draw a nice line here. So we can put everything into our general equation, which is this right here. 85.1 is equal to m, which we said was negative 14.7. Okay, so 14.7. Okay, that, friends, I think I'm on a different question. Okay, so it's minus 9.8 times 1 plus b, okay? So that means b is equal to 85.1 plus 9.8. I'll write that out, 85.1 plus 9.8. Okay, is B. It means B is equal to 94.9, okay? So putting it back into our general equation, Y then is equal to minus 9.8 X plus 
plus 94.9, okay? And that is our equation for the tangent at t is equal to one second. Okay, so that concludes our lesson for today. Let's check our learning. Okay, so an oil tank is being drained for cleaning. After t seconds, there are v liters of oil left in the tank, where v of t is equal to 10, bracket 10 minus t squared. t is in between 0 and 10. Determine the rate of change of the volume at the time t is equal to 5 minutes. Make your selection. And the answer is C. And that concludes our lesson for today. So we'll see you next time. Have a good one.